so if God his love and his spirit the spirit of Jesus Christ is in us then God wants us to grow and become more like the spirit of Christ that is in us verses so let's read responsibly Paul and Timothy is the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ I thank my God upon every remembrance of you always in prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy for your fellow your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. That you may approve things that are excellent, and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Together, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Amen. Precious Father, I thank you very much for the word of God. and. I do ask the Lord God that your word will find place in our hearts today. Bless, strength, encourage, and heal. Minister to us where we are by your grace and by your spirit. And let us all rejoice and give thanks to you for your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm not sure what happened to the... Uh, rest of the heat but um, we ran from one place to come to another and uh, we will definitely see um, Angelo about that <clears throat> praise the Lord I want to talk briefly with you concerning uh, uh, love being our purpose and goal in life we talked on the other week about part of our pur purpose being uh, having access to God and the priesthood and that yes. purpose uh, we are to exercise that as priests of God. And here is the heart of our spirits and our purpose dealing with love. And um, just briefly, in the, by way of background, Paul, uh, the original members of this church at Philippi was um, the Philippian jailer, the little slave girl that the spirit of divination was cast out of her and then uh, Lydia who was a business lady and all of these here there uh, these formed the nucleus of this early young church at Philippi and uh, the history um, I don't want to get too much into history here but um, um, said that Paul was in jail at the time and when uh, the church at Philippi heard this was some years later had heard that he was uh, incarcerated and they uh, became concerned and um, he uh, wrote this letter to uh, and is sent it by Epaphroditus to comfort their hearts and to cause them to know that 
you know, it was well. The reason, the purposes of God had increased instead of decreased. And uh, he was not restricted as it seemed. Paul was one of those persons that he found opportunity wherever he was in whatever situation he was in. So here he was in the jail that said that all in the palace, the guards and the praetorian, those people there, they had an opportunity to hear the gospel. So, you know, it's just so wonderful that Paul is able to uh, just uh, find Christ and, and still do what he's called to do in spite of circumstances and situations, which is a good uh, example for us. Uh, and sometimes when we find ourselves in desperate straits, we don't really think about witnessing, but uh, he had it always in his heart, witnessing. And but the two verses or the three verses I want to fall zero in on is verses nine through eleven, as we've done several times before. Uh, and verse nine says, well, of course, eight says, "God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ." So Paul has such an affection for the church at Philippi and all the other churches as well. But there was something very special about this church at Philippi. And um, so in his bowels, in the bowels of Jesus Christ, in the, uh, these areas, uh, you know, when we think in the natural bowels, we have the lung, the heart, and uh, the liver, and all of these precious parts of our lives. But here, uh, even in a natural and a spiritual sense, uh, the affections of God that was in his life for the church. And he says... Uh, I pray this, that your love may abound or overflow more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. So just thinking about it, uh, they were in a good state. He heard good things about the church of Philippi. And yet his prayer, his heart's prayer was that the church would overflow or grow more in love and in insight or perceptions. And so, you know, in, in uh, when you think in terms of love being our real goal in life, and then you can't help but think uh, about what Paul is saying. And uh, Minister Denise was sharing about love on Wednesday. And uh, <clears throat> I, as I went home, and I think maybe Friday night, I was looking at one of those little uh, Hallmark plays. And uh, I told the church in Suffolk I didn't have anything better to do, so I just uh, sat down to look at it. And uh, but to my amazement, <laughs> Uh, it was it was just a reminder. There was a story of a young man there who was, had been divorced from his wife, and uh, his father-in-law was a minister, and his mother-in-law was saved. So just briefly, her attitude was just wrong, and she just did not like the young man. He had caused his wife or his daughter some real problems. And uh, so she, wanted, she just didn't want him back in their lives, and uh, he had two daughters. But the long story short was that he had a... He didn't have anything to give him. He was a um, he played with a band. Somehow that broke up, and then he was uh, worked at a bar, became a bartender, and eventually bought the bar. But um, uh, to conclude and make a long story short, uh, after it, the end of it, when his mother-in-law, had, former mother-in-law, had a change of heart and began to see the good in him. Um, Things changed. She looked. Uh, she was called attention to a lot of things that she was just not looking at. She was kind of bent on uh, controlling and having her way in her daughter's life, and she was ruining her daughter's life, and she was ruining uh, uh, the life and the family. So finally, the young man told his former wife that you know you're afraid of your mother. You won't say nothing. You just let her go on and. So she took it, took, took him up on that, and she began to tell her mom later at a, in a dispute that you know you, I I still love him. Basically, he's brought me two wonderful daughters, and they're precious to me, and some other things. And uh, so the concluded all, he gave a song, and that song was to something that was ongoing. He sang concerning his family and his children, and he didn't have some of the other things that. You give it Christmas time, but he gave what he had, his heart, towards them. And so as it was over, and the mother-in-law had a change of heart, somehow or another, it just kind of affected me. It bothered me. It bothered me in a good way, not in a negative way. And I was thinking about that. 
And um, I was thinking about how what he needed, she didn't know how to give it at first until she had a change of heart. And I don't know, I, I just, it just really just made me want to love more. It just somehow or another just really uh, made me want to love agape style. You know, we can love sometimes, we love our style, but we don't really know how to love agape style. It's, that's self-sacrificing, you know, that's, that's different. But it yields the kind of fruit that uh, helps in the kingdom and advances God's kingdom. So I was really, uh, so I got to thinking, I said, well, you know, that was really good. That, um, my mind went back to that. And, uh, so it, and I was talking to my wife seeking the Lord Friday and then Saturday and nothing seemed to be coming to my mind and I had read just a bit of this portion of scripture here and then verses 9 through 11 kind of slightly stuck out but nothing big and so I told her I said well I don't know I've been really seeking the Lord and worshiping and just not getting anything and no I said only one little thing that kind of slightly touched me and she said, well, what was that? And I said, well, this is about the love thing. So she said, well, just preach that. That's what we need. <laughs> so, so I said, well, maybe I've been just not wanting to preach what he wanted me to say this then. So anyway, I went back and says, okay, well, let me just look at that. And so it was there when the, he began to open it up a little further to me. And uh, so my mind went back to the fact that he had obviously put that on Minister Denise's heart about love. We need love. We, we need to more love. We need to know how to love and to walk in love. We, we, uh, that's not normal for us. But the one that's normal or above normal is in us. And so he wants to teach us how to love. So, and, uh, so anyway, Paul shares this. Now I want you to look at it in verse 9. I pray this, he said, that your love may abound or overflow Yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. Judgment here is perception and depth of insight. One person says, basically it is saying sense, good sense. But I like to stick with the perception and insight, you know. But so he said, I pray that your love will grow more and more. In these areas, more understanding and more insight. Uh, insight has to do with discerning inner qualities, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, for example, if I see you and if I see you act in a certain way, if I judge you based on what it looks like, I can say that. Your heart is a certain way, but I don't know your heart, right? So I can misjudge you by looking on the outward appearance or listening to what you say. So when he's saying, I pray that your love will grow more and more in knowledge and in insight or discernment as well, he's saying, I want you to be able to mature in the gifts of discerning and understanding and having insight into a person's life. And that way you can make wise choices, right? You can always choose the right path or the better path. And so, uh, uh, and it's true. Uh, and um, before it's over with, I hope we can kind of give a couple of examples that Clear, uh, uh, makes clear that, but but insight and perception. If if I or and I'm using I, me for an example because that, that way it's harmless. You know you you know if I, if I use you, you might not take too good of that. It, uh, so, but if I look at you and I if I if I judge you based on what I hear you saying or doing, then then. I'm not the judge. I didn't make the laws. I'm not the lawgiver. So I'm not qualified to judge you, right? And vice versa. And so when love, he's praying now, 
that the love of God's people in, in, in Philippi would grow more and more. In other words, more light, more illumination to shine in on what they know. More revelation knowledge, more uh, understanding into this whole thing of the spiritual realm as to who we are and whose we are and what we're all about. And so when we grow in that area, we begin to, to function differently. I, I don't act the way I used to act 20 years ago. And you don't act the same way, Right? Because you've grown, you've learned some things. And the Bible says the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. So our path in life must be uh, constantly clear, becoming clearer and clearer as to our purpose and whose we are and what we're all about. Right? So he says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one toward another. Ecclesiastes, I believe it is, says many waters cannot quench love. Love is stronger than hate. Love is stronger than death. Love is so strong and powerful. The Bible says, let us love one another because love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. But he that loveth not knoweth not God because God is love. You know, when we stand before God, I always remember that scripture that says uh, in the day that when God is beginning to say, uh, come, you blessed of the Lord. And uh, I believe all of us want to hear him say, uh, I, I was I was sick and, and you, 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 you visited me. I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. Come, you blessed of the Lord, enter into the joys of your Lord. So he's saying uh, to the other that's going to depart, they look at somebody and say, thank God that won't be me. Thank God, that won't be me. To those, the ghosts, in other words, he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And basically, he was saying, I never knew you. I'm so glad that that's not you and I. But, but the point that I want to make is that we are people of love. We've been born of love. Peter says it like this, being born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God. He further says all flesh is like grass. And all the glory of man is like the flower grass. There's a withering, there's a fading, right? But the word of God has the enduring quality. Hallelujah. So what he's encouraging us now when he's saying, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. He talks about the word of God is the, is the kind of seed that we're made of, right? We're made of and born of something incorruptible, something that is bigger and powerful than what we know in our own life. So here, here Paul, I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing what Paul said here. This was his prayer. His, 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 his bowels of affection was so for the church. And I shared with uh, you earlier that the church consisted of the um, Lydia, who was a businesswoman. She got converted. Uh, the little slave girl that was going around saying, these men are the servants of the most high that show us the way of salvation. And that was her song, day and night, God, every day. And finally, Paul just got fed up with it. He turned around and said, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. So the spirit of divination was cast out of the woman. So the little child, and she could no longer divine. So the, the, her masters, they got really mad. I mean, they just really got mad with Paul. Drugged them up there too before the magistrates had them thrown in jail. And then, while he was there, they began to sing and praise God. An earthquake came, and this earthquake broke the chains and the doors 
of the prison were open and everybody was able to come out. And then the jailer who had the guard over them, he knew that if they escaped, he was a dead man. So he reached out his sword and got ready to kill himself. And Paul said, don't do yourself no harm. We're all here. And at that time, he had never heard of such. So he fell down before Paul and said, what must I do to be saved? Look what God did in that situation. He turned it around. The Philippine jail, he took him to his house and he led him in his household to the Lord. So this was the nucleus or the, the, the foundation of this church. The little slave girl, Lily the businesswoman, and the jail in his household, they were the beginning part of this new church that was started. And from there, of course, others, you know. But uh, so Paul had a special love for the church at Philippi. And uh, the reason for that, when he wrote this letter, uh, Epaphroditus was, he heard about Paul being sick, the church at Philippi, heard Paul was, was in jail. So they sent him over to check on Paul and they sent a little offering or some kind of offering. But when he got over there, he saw that, boy, Paul's need was much bigger than that. And so he decided he was going to get a job. So he got a job and began to work just to support Paul while he was in jail. Look at his mom say, wow. And so while he was working, though, he fell sick. He got sick and he almost died. And Paul said, man, boy, it's like a little sorrow upon sorrow. But anyway, God had mercy on him, he said, raised him up. And then so the church got word that he had been sick and they were worried about him. So when God raised him up, Paul sent him there back so that the church could see, you know, to be confident and to see what God had done. And so but he sent this letter along with him that we are this book here, Philippi, he wrote this letter and uh so he didn't want them to be to misunderstand the fact that he was in jail because Solomon says, "Oh Lord, our leader's in jail. Oh my God, you know I'm embarrassed." You know. So Paul told him, "You know, the the the, the, the all this is." Uh, redounding to the glory of God. In other words, I'm getting a chance to witness to the, to, to the whole palace guards. I, I'm witnessing the Christ. So in other words, Paul was one that found opportunity in every situation. Look at somebody say, that's what I want to do. He wouldn't let no circumstance or situation stop him from his purpose. Hallelujah. And so Paul said, I don't want you to be, be disheartened and understand. He said, all this is falling out for the glory of God. So he wrote to comfort their hearts. And then, but in the midst of that, he said, he said, I pray that your love may grow or abound more and more. Uh, basically with a fuller understanding of your purpose in God and what this love thing is all about. And began to be able to better discern the inner qualities of humans' lives. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So that you can make wise decisions or choices, right? Then, So that you will be sincere. How many know if you make unwise choices, it's got a way of coming back to you, right? So it caused them grief and oppression and frustration. So Paul understood that. So he says, uh, basically, the better, the more wisdom you grow in, the wiser you can uh, operate and make the wiser choices, right? Do you agree to that? So Paul's, uh, the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. So this is essentially what he's saying. And so let's look at this love thing. Now, why, why is God so big on love? Well, the Bible says God is love. That is the spirit that we are of. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. So if God, his love and his spirit, the spirit of Jesus Christ is in us, then God wants us to grow and become more like the spirit of Christ that is in us. Yes. Does that make any sense? Yes. So the Bible says God is love. It says God is love. Now, the ingredients... The power, whose we are, everything is there. God's spirit is in us. And so now we have to educate ourselves so that we can walk in harmony with the spirit of God that's in us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Have you heard them say that Jesus sometimes can be in a person and he is miserable? <laughs> Look at somebody and say, well, that's not me. But when we cooperate with God, he's not made miserable. Isn't that right? He's there to bring us to victory. He's there to help us to grow. He's there to bring healing to us. He's there to give us revelation knowledge and insight so that we can become more like our Lord. And so that in the final days we stand before God and God is well pleased. We don't have to say, oh God, I didn't know he was like that. Good God. But he says, when we allow love to have its way, then we will have no fear on the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. We look like Jesus on this earth. Hallelujah. And hallelujah when we see him. Glory to God. My God. So he's developing love in us. He's developing our love. So Paul said now that I pray that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and in all judgment or, or insight. Now, let's, let's, let's look at Jesus' love a little bit. Now, here's Jesus. Here's Jesus, the man of Galilee. He goes to a woman, and this woman, he goes into Simon's place. Simon had him over for dinner, and then he, this woman came there. And she was crying, weeping, and wetting his feet and took her hair and wiping it. Jesus didn't say anything. So Simon knew that the woman was a prostitute. Yes. So in the old days, prophets wouldn't, you know, prophets didn't, they dealt with them differently, right? So now the, the Simon, he's familiar with the Old Testament history. He said, now if this woman, if this man was a true prophet, if he really was a prophet, he would know. What kind of woman that is down there with his feet, you know. So Jesus discerned him. Wow. So when he discerned his inner qualities, he said, Simon, I got something to say to you. And he said, uh, I came into your house. Didn't salute me with a kiss. Gave me no water. He went on me. Tell him what he didn't do. He said, but this woman from the time that I came in not stop she bathes my feet with the water of her tears 